I have to be honest, I got really hooked on black and white photography for quite a while. And I think all of my biggest winning award photos have been black and white. So I feel like I know a bit about it. So when you're going out taking black and white photos, you need to be in like a different mindset. And there's, there's something you've got to look for. You look for patterns, textures, and contrast. Contrast is definitely a big one. And I don't just mean in like light, but in shape and texture, color, something that's different to its surroundings, if that makes sense. So it's got that physical or in light contrast. But the biggest subject that actually I think is when it comes to editing or converting your black and white images. If you just shoot in the standard black and white or you convert a color image to automatic black and white, that's not good enough and I feel you can do a lot better. So try some of these styles. First is just, like I said, the auto convert to black and white. And this gives you sometimes a pretty good image, but most of the time, I'm sorry, it's not good enough. So what is normally the next stage that black and white photographers go to is quite a high contrast of really dark blacks and strong whites. And it's, it's very, very punchy and in your face. And to be honest, for most tastes, it looks a little too over edited for, for my liking anyway. Next, there is low key, where you're trying to get everything as dark as possible without losing detail in your shadows, and your highlights are nothing more than like a, a, a grey. You very rarely get close to white, but most images are trying to be as dark as possible. After that, there's the polar opposite, which is called high key, where you're trying to get everything as bright as possible, and your shadows are nothing more than maybe a grey. Speaking of opposites, the polar opposite of that high contrast is a very low contrast, where you're trying to get everything in your image to like a grey point. There's no blacks, there's no whites, you're just trying to get everything grey. And this... It's, it's, I see it around a bit. It seems like a bit of a trend in some circles. Also, speaking of trends, another very trendy image is quite a high contrast in your midtones, but you have no black and you know white. So it's still, I call it like a crush style. You get your tone curve and you bring up your blacks and you bring down your whites, but you create some contrast in the middle. This is quite trendy still at the moment, and actually I feel it's pretty good as well. But all those styles aside, there is a bigger tip to do. Turn your phone volume down. Now whatever style you pick, there isn't a wrong or right one. You've got to really find one that works well for your images or your style or whatever series you're doing. But what's more important, I feel, is to actually be a bit more selective with your editing. Now whether if you've converted from a colour to a black and white and you go down to the black and white sliders and tweak certain colours to add that, that pop, that difference to certain elements of your photos, or what I love to do and always do is with a mask or with a brush, get in and pick a, like a, a texture, a background, the main subject and add some dodge and burning some brightness and darkness to certain elements to add that that depth that 3d-ness to it and it can be quite subtle and it suits all different styles of black and white photography which i talked about just before but i feel it is key to get your images from looking dull to that extra punch of black and white so what i did for my black and white photography project today i walked around the house and the shed and the farm and everything i could find around me with a 23 mil 1.4 and the xt4 obviously and i just tried to find little bits of character and detail around that i thought would be interesting items with story with contrast with texture something that stood out and looked a little bit quirky to me i then shot all of them in colour and convert them into black and white. I did quite a heavy vignette on the whole lot and then combine them all into a series of nine. Shooting a series was actually quite fun and I'm pretty sure I've got that as a subject coming up. Hopefully I draw that out before the end of this. The flippy screen on the T4 was actually really helpful for all these weird little angles. There was a lot of times where I was shooting straight down or straight up on something and just having that extra variable screen was very helpful for that. If you have any questions about the way I've shot anything today, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you could like, share, or most importantly, subscribe, it would mean the world to me. And that little subscription on YouTube helps me get one step closer to doing these videos for a full-time living. Also, if you would like to join in on this challenge or any of your own challenges, feel free to hashtag TV Photo Challenge. I've been loving seeing all your work. Or, finally, if you'd like to join in tomorrow for another exciting video with Thomas Busby as I try and take photos of macro. <laughs>